Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is Straight Out of Boston here, aka the King of Boston, and today we have episode six of my Around the League series. And today we're doing the Phoenix Suns. So, just gonna get straight into this. You can see uh, my opponent is using the Los Angeles Clippers. Now, this is the second game that I tried to play with this team. The first game, I played the Bulls and was winning by about 20 at halftime, and the guy rage quit. So, I decided I would not do that. But this guy actually ends up rage quitting after the third quarter. So, uh,. It was a little bit longer of a gameplay. I kind of wish I had just, you know, kept the gameplay against the Bulls. But anyway, don't want to ramble too much. I want to get straight into this, talking about the roster, because this isn't, isn't that long of a video. Uh, first off, I want to talk about Goran Dragic and Marcin Gortat. Now, Goran Dragic, Dragic is, who I believe, one of the most underrated players in the NBA. He is so good. He's so talented. He's played under Alvin Gentry and the Phoenix Suns before, which I think is big when you're replacing a guy like Steve Nash. Just when you're replacing a point guard in general, I think the point guard is one of the most important, probably the most important position in basketball. And if your point guard can't learn the system, then you're going to struggle as a team. And I think that getting Goran Dragic was the perfect player to replace Steve Nash. I don't think he's going to replicate Steve Nash's passing ability or anything like that. But I think he knows the system enough. He is a great passer. He's a great playmaker, too. He can score the ball, get steals, can hit threes. He's, he's a great all-around player. I love Goran Dragic. He's so underrated. If you haven't seen him, just check out his highlight clip. I mean, or some of his highlights or whatever. You, you will be amazed at what this guy can do with the ball in his hands. It, it is very amazing. I think that when you have a guy like Steve Nash who makes everybody on your team much better, the best guy to replace him with is a guy like Goran Dragic because I think that... I just think he was the perfect replacement for Steve Nash. And I'll talk about Marcin Gortat, too. Uh, they've talked about trading Marcin Gortat, which I'm not a big fan of them doing. I don't know what his contract's like, but I think if they can keep him, they should keep him. Um, this is actually his fifth year this year, so they must have re-signed him or something, because after four years, your contract, your rookie contract's up. So, I don't know. But Gortat has done really well. I underestimated his post-game, his mid-range, just everything about him. I thought that last year he was just relying on Steve Nash a lot of the time, and that's why he had such a great year. But I just I underestimated him as a player, and he's proven that you know, he might not be the same player that he was last year because... You know, Steve Nash is the type of player that makes your big men much better than they really are. See much better than they really are. Just because he's Steve Nash and he can set you up so well. But Gortat's really proved that he can be, you know, a top top five center in the NBA. I'll say that he, I don't know if he's, he is one. It's so much debate on that. I'm, But I think he could, he could be one. I think he could be one this year. I think he could be one for years to come. He's still young. Uh, he is only, let's see, he's born in 1984. He's only 28 years old. You know, he's got a lot of room to grow, a lot of room to develop too. Well, actually... I shouldn't say that, but he's got a lot of room, well, <laughs> I don't even know. He's just, he's a great player, and the Sun should be very excited about having him and Dragic, hopefully for the long haul. Now, you look at the rest of the roster, they got some guys, uh, I'll talk about Beasley quickly. Michael Beasley is a guy who was a huge draft, but well, I call him a draft bust. He was drafted number two overall, right behind Derrick Rose, right in front of Russell Westbrook. And he's drafted by the Miami Heat, and eventually the Heat uh, traded them to clear up cap space for signing the big three. Traded to Minnesota. Uh, he had his best year, actually, in his first year in Minnesota, but last year really struggled, shot the ball very poorly, and this year has kind of been similar. He's shown flashes of his old self, but I don't think that he's really going to be much more than a 14-5 and five type of player, which could be good. I don't know. I mean, he's 6'10", he's athletic, and he can play the small fourth position, so there's obviously, there needs to be room. I mean, there doesn't need to be room, but there should be room there for some sort of improvement. But, you know, he's a scorer. I mean, he's the guy who you put him in for 20 minutes a game coming off the bench. He could do you well. The or Do you well. He can do well. But the question is, is he going to buy into that? You know, I don't think that's what the Suns have planned for him. I think he is going to be this team's starting small forward. But I think if, if Beasley really wants to find a role for himself in the NBA, he needs to not try to be the star of the team. He needs to try and just be a guy who can come off the bench or even start and just provide that scoring punch, that little bit of extra scoring that you need. Now, just quickly, the rest of the roster, guys I like and dislike. Um, I like Scola. I think that he's a good player. I think that uh, the Rockets were smart to amnesty him, especially when they were looking for to try to sign a guy like James Harden. I think he's a good pickup by the Suns. Jermaine O'Neal's looking really good. Um, he, you know, he's terrible on the Celtics, but he's looking really good right now for the Suns. Markeith Morris, I really like. I'm big on him. Second-year player out of Kansas, I think he could be the power forward for the future of this team. Kendall Marshall, I w yeah, this is a bad draft pick, I think. But he's uh, a word. Or, <laughs> I can't talk. Um, 
word is that he's looked good in the D League since he got sent down there the other day. He had a good debut. So that's good to see. You know, he needs to develop an offensive game, but he's a great passer. He's, you know, another guy who would be kind of the right guy to try and replace Steve Nash with, if you can ever replace Steve Nash. Wesley Johnson is another guy who's kind of a draft bust. Um, he's really good in 2K. Uh, he's not that good in real life, but we'll see if he has room to, I mean, he has room to develop. We'll see if he can develop a little bit. Channing Fry is going to be a solid role player. Jerry Dudley is one of the best role players in the NBA. Shannon Brown, same thing. I like the way this team is built. Um, they're struggling right now in real life, but I think that if they can acquire a star or two, this team has a lot of room for improvement. They have, they just have a lot of room to grow. So I really like this team. I like the players that they're planning to build around in Dragic and Gortat. I think they just need to find maybe one more big star, a guy who they can give the ball to at the end of the game. They remind me a lot of the Nuggets last year. And we'll see if they can replicate, you know, what the Nuggets have done in the last year or so. But anyway, that's pretty much it for me. So I thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I don't know what the next episode is, but I believe it's San Antonio Spurs. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And so I'm out. Peace.